What's going on, motherfuckers? Welcome to the Crocs and Hot Pockets podcast. My name is Snackers, and today is September 19th, 2021, and this is episode number 163. Jimmy, can I get a little singing jingle intro from you? Yes, get my friend. Oh, no. (laughs) What the fuck did you even say? I said, yes, you can, my friend. Oh, okay. I, but I was I, just really into it. Good. I liked it. Um, well, hello, buddy. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I may or may not have had, uh, you saw me jamming. I have uh, Classical Gas by Mannheim Steamroller from 1987 in the background right now. Is that what, har- what happens when you fart in an antique shop? It's Classical Gas, but it's a good, like, the. I like that song. It goes, you probably would recognize it. Like, look, just type classical gas, Mannheim steamroller, and, and you can see what I was bebopping to. I was feeling I can't, it. DMCA can't do it. You don't have it separated where you can listen to it and not. Well, I just figured because you have a two stream setup that you had like some way. To, oh, no, no. I mean, every, yeah. everything that plays on my gaming computer gets routed through, you know, gets routed through the streaming PC. Oh, anyway. Well, I <clears throat> it's a uh, it's a it's a nice little tune. Nice little tune. I yeah, I'm gonna have to take your word for it because I have no, no fucking idea <laughs> what the song it is. Oh my god! Yeah. Take a sip. I think I inhaled I, way too much sawdust today. So this is a perfect time for me to tell you what I'm drinking right now. Ooh okay. yeah, please do. So I've got a uh, it's a beer called a pumpkin uh, kerfuffle. Mm. Okay, check out the sweet kind of like a. Matrix Mr. Smith with a pumpkin on it, but instead it, of like that, he's got like a bowler hat though, too. He also looks like the Quaker from Seven Psychopaths with a pumpkin. Yeah. I think well, that's me, way more accurate. I'm gonna go so with that. It is a Imperial sour beer with pumpkin pie, spice blend, and toasted marshmallow flavor. And I gotta say, I'm not a fan of pumpkin flavored any type of beer, but this mix with the sour is actually pretty solid. It's not bad. It's not one of my favorites, but it's not bad. It's not bad. I'll definitely give it a shot. Um, There's there's a couple things like that where I only used to eat pineapple on pizza. I did not eat pine. No fucking kebabs. No fruit salads. No pineapple yogurt parfaits. I just didn't like. I didn't like it at all. I'm trying. There's something else where I only eat it in like a specific situation and it's like one single thing um like brussels sprouts you know what i ruined brussels sprouts trying to food prep them like fresh well done roasted brussels sprouts are very very good um Mm -hmm. on the fourth day of sitting in a a food container with skirt steak and sweet potato fries that have now all sogged all my skirty meat juices all over the brussels sprouts uh, it's not, not good. I did, I did, however, one of the, the Brussels sprout recipes I had, they were tossed in like smashed nuts and dried cranberries. And that was fantastic. That was like really, really fucking good. Mm. Speaking of good, I'm gonna take a sip of this lovely whiskey. I'm just going to the classic maker's mark right now. Um, I, did you see the, I got Scott- another one. Hang on. Oh, you do. I haven't opened it yet. This is a called Key Lime Pie, a lime Ooh. sour ale brewed with graham crackers and lactose. Bro, you got titty milk in your beer. What the fuck? Yo, baby, hey, this is all about trying new things, man. That's what I do. Have you ever tasted your wife's breast milk? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. Um, did you see... The scotch that Squirt Kensington brought to my house when he was here. I think I saw a picture of it, and I don't remember what it was. Uh, Aberlauer or Aberlo, I, th- I believe is how it was pronounced, and I think it was a 16-year aged. Okay. And when he when he told me that he was bringing scotch, my immediate thought was fucking gross. I don't want right, anything right. to do with it. However, that scotch is. Mo- is more smooth and more flavorful than half of the whiskeys and bourbons that I've tried so far. And I haven't tried 
anything extravagant when it comes to whiskeys and bourbons. Like I've had a couple really, really good things, but holy shit, was I amazed and that was that that shit was delicious. There's some really good scotch out there, but generally speaking, the it's gonna gonna cost you probably to get some good scotch not always but it, it it probably you're probably gonna have to spend a little more than you would on just a whiskey or bourbon to get decent scotch you know we um so i've also, heard yeah because i do not buy scotch often no no i generally stick to whiskey um uh, but even that like i've even i've even been trying to cut back on like just my drinking in general just because i work and everything i've been trying to you know avoid situations where are, during the week i i know it's it's easy right now with everything going on in the world to just kind of get into that rut of where like oh, i'll just have a couple but then sometimes if you if you let that door open that couple turns into more than a couple and you know so yep. i try not to drink much at all during the week i might allow myself a couple like on thursday or something but generally i won't have more than a beer or two max uh just because i don't want to have to deal with feeling shitty the next day you know it you know um i was talking to um what's her fucking name my girlfriend <laughs> oh, weenie yeah weenie um i was talking to her the other day because i i don't sleep the greatest like i sleep okay um it is my own fault that i choose to get anywhere from four to six hours of sleep on, on a weeknight uh, I just, I always find something to do in between the hours of 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. on a weeknight. And it's like, it's when my juices are flowing. It's when the cock's pumping. You know, I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so I also have an issue falling asleep very, very often. And even if I, even if I do my due diligence of getting off the computer and then just chilling before I actually get into bed, uh, sometimes it doesn't work. A couple weeks ago, I noticed that I just had a glass of whiskey and I fell asleep fast and I slept mm -hmm. like a fucking baby and I woke up refreshed. I'm like, hmm, I'm going to test that theory again just to just see if it's if it was a coincidence or not. And the next day, sure enough, fucking zonked right the hell out and slept great. I'm like, well, this is fucking dangerous. I should be, I should not be drinking anymore. It's good as a short term solution, but it yeah. definitely can turn into a dangerous thing where your body. Because I've been down that road before too, especially when like when COVID started and, and we were isolated and everything else, and everything was on total quarantine. I was teaching from home. Like, there were some nights where I couldn't sleep, and the only thing that would like make it easier, I would just down a freaking glass of whiskey real quick. Yep. And uh, that's not something. That's not something that. I knew better, you know, but I, at the same time, I was like, I wanted to get some fucking sleep. It, yeah. So, you know, uh, I've gotten away from that, of course. But like I said, in a, in a, if you know it's temporary, but the problem is it's a slippery slope because sometimes that temporary thing turns into a long term thing. And that's yep. where it hits you. Yeah, I'm back on to my caffeine shit, unfortunately. And I, I absolutely loved being off of caffeine completely, but I'm pretty sure... I don't think I'll ever be able to escape fully unless I absolutely cut it out 100%. Because the first coffee, the first caffeinated beverage after months of not having any caffeine is like the best fucking thing in the world. It honestly feels like a drug. Well, it is. It fucking is. Uh, and it's just as addictive uh, as other ones as well. Um, but man... Uh, it's back in my life and it fucking sucks. I wonder, is there anybody in chat who is vice list? Like vice list, L E S S. Are do you not no alcohol, no weed, no vaping, no caffeine, just like nothing at all? Well, you're you saying completely... vice in the sense of just drugs in general. Um sort of kind of not necessarily drugs, but just like what else? What else would you include in that list? Sex. What are the vices? <laughs> so don't have sex. Is that what you're saying? You're asking to out all the virgins in the yes. chat room. Is that yep. what you want? Tell right us now? you're a virgin. Um, but I guess maybe it's maybe not necessarily caffeine, but pop, right? Like, is do you have anything that is you just have to have, right? Or are you somebody who's like, no, I'm I've been able to free myself of all. The vice grips that this fucking world has to throw at us, because there, there's a lot. 
There's a lot of them, and coping mechanisms become really fucking prominent in your in your older age. Mm, I think just my own Straight two cents edge. on this is is moderation is key for everything. You know? um, obviously, a lot of the things that mention like vices or alcohol or whatever, if you I mean, you're literally putting a type of poison into your body. I mean, that's essentially what it is, but. It sure tastes good, and uh, it gives you some of these side effects that, you know, you appreciate. I generally, for the most part, just really enjoy craft beer. That's what I like to drink the most. It's always been that way. I've dabbled a little in the hard liquor. I've started to pull back a little from that just because I didn't want to get to the point where I was dependent on it too much. So now I don't buy whiskey, but, like, once a month at the most. You know? Really? Mm-hmm. I, I've... Yeah. Been now that I'm trying again to <coughs> lose weight, I've been I've tried to stop buying beer because I just drink in volume when I have it. Mm -hmm. um, I would say I would say I usually have three to four. If I'm in video game mode in the evening and I'm hanging out with friends, I'm usually putting down three to four craft beers. Mm -hmm. um, but with with whiskey, I can fill up a double and then just kind of sip on that for the night and then and then feel great and then just kind of go into the next morning. Um, but holy shit, can I chug calories when I am drinking beer? Good God. The way it is, man. But again, like I said, uh, I, as long as you're, mo I mean, literally, beer like any other, anything, you gotta, just gotta be, you gotta moderate. I mean, you could, there's such a thing as too much exercise, you know? Um, Amen. There's such a thing as drinking too much water. I, some people get all crazy about drinking water. I've gotten a lot better at drinking it lately. Knowing that, hey, that's going to help keep you healthier, you know, and with everything going on in the world today, it's like, I need to make sure that I'm staying hydrated, <laughs> you know? Who the fuck thought it was a good idea to invent water and make our bodies dependent on it? Because I hate that shit. <laughs> I hate drinking water. I hate having to remember to drink water. It tastes like ass. It's only good at a certain temperature. I wish I'm like these other people. They can put a, a glass of water on their nightstand and just wake up casually in the middle of the night. Go, oh my god, I'm so parched. Let me take a, a delicious gulp of this lukewarm ass water that's got dust from the furnace in it and pet hair and cum. I can't do it. I don't know how these fucking people do it, man. You done? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm done. You sounded pretty entitled with that rant right there. I just want to let you I know. I fucking hate There's drinking water. There's a lot of people water. who don't even have access to clean drinking water around the world. You're bitching about oh, water oh, on a nightstand. Right. Oh, you you're going to spit it that way. Bitch. All right, anyways. You son of a bitch. Hello, no, please everybody. tell us more about how you don't like that fresh glass of clean water on your nightstand to drink and how it's so gross and the, and the little dust particles and pollen can get in, in there and maybe a cat hair. Tell that to the kid in, in Africa. All right, tell that who's got shit and filth around his water. How much money have you sent over to Africa, Jimmy? <laughs> this year? Ever? None. Hmm. Okay. So, anyways, let's let's rant about the temperature of showers but and I'm how it doesn't saying, stay hot long I'm enough. I'm just saying that it that has no bearing on this conversation. How much money I've sent to Africa? I'm just saying I'm not complaining about. I'm drinking mm. water. That's all. You, you, I, I couldn't. I could barely hear your judgments from so fucking high up there. I just had to like cut my ears. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> oh my god, Chad, I'm gonna be coughing a lot today. I don't know what's going on, but as soon as I sat down, my throat started um extracting juices. So we obviously haven't had a podcast in some time, and I am 110 percent not to blame for that. Jimmy is. Uh, but no, really. So I ended up getting sick. Uh, at this point, it was probably about a month ago. Um, I went to a Weezer concert and the Weezer concert was the maybe the third time in the past two years that I had gone out to a public area, like a massive like where there was an insane amount of people not masked, um, obviously vaccinated and, and felt comfortable even though Delta variant is really fucking hitting hard here in Michigan, of the, the county, the counties around us are insane with it. Um, but I went to the show, you know, still tried to distance as much as I could not to get in anybody's mouth space, but pretty impossible when you're at a concert, even though we were in the bleachers 
And the next day, had a tickle in my throat, and then that shit knocked me out for four days straight, five days straight. Um, I, I was horizontal. I had to take a, two days off of work. Um, thankfully, it was not COVID, um, even though there's <coughs> obviously still a chance that it was just because the tests aren't as, as accurate. But, man, if I, I got fucked up. I got real fucked up. And it reminded me how shitty being sick was. Not, not a fan of that. Have you gotten sick at all since pandemic started, Jimmy? No. Wow, I'm kind of jealous. I, I had a really good streak there all the way up to fucking Weezer. Yeah, I've been really lucky, too. And that was even one of the points of I've been busy this last month. It's not all your fault. I mean, I've been busy and tired because it was back to work for me. Um, I've been back to work for five weeks, four of them with students and teaching. And I've got 30 plus students in my classroom. There's no mask mandate in Texas. So, oh, my you know, God, I it's like I've been trying my best to just avoid getting sick at work, you know, and so far so good. Um, you know, and obviously I'm vaccinated and whatnot, and I know some of the students are, but you know, it's a, it's a weird having it being a political thing down here to fucking that not wear masks and how the governor, our governor has kind of politicized <laughs> that. It's really weird. You know? Anyway, it, but yeah, that's kind of like my last month. I've been fortunate to have not gotten sick. Now that I'm back in a place where we don't have those protections that we had last year, you know what I mean? Where everyone had to wear a mask. Right. And now it's like maybe one out of every 10 students wears a mask at where I work. You know, what's surprising to me. Um, it is surprising that there are, I wonder if there are kids who have asked for a mask for school and have had their parents tell them no. Like, I'm, I'm surprised that there aren't more kids that realize like, oh, you know what? Even like high schoolers, right, who have started <coughs> started to begin thinking for themselves. I'm surprised that there's not more kids that that wear masks just from looking around. There's a lot of sick. there's a lot of staff that don't wear them either. I'm not saying it's just uh, just them. I mean, no, I'd no. Say, no. Right, right. I'm, I'd I'm, say I'm best just saying, one in ten of anyone wears masks around. Wow. Them. So it's it's weird and it's. It is what it is, man. But it seems what I'm doing is working. I'm maintaining my social distance from my students. You know, I don't come into their space without having a mask on. I teach with a mask off, but I'm more than six feet from them. You know, and anytime I go into their part of the classroom, I have my mask on. And they're not allowed to come in my part of the area without a mask on or I'm masked, you know. So with, it's been working. With masks and shields normalized, do you feel like you are back to a normal school year or does it still feel like... No, it's not normal. I haven't had because, like you mentioned, this Delta variant is so strong. I have never. We, I'm. This is now starting the fifth week with students in school, and we. I have never, not one single day, had all of my students because oh, wow. there's always at least somebody out because of COVID or COVID symptoms. Mm. I've never gone a day where I've seen every student of mine. Do you have anybody started. virtual learning still? That's not funded by our like our state. They took the funding for that away. Wow. Yeah. Now, they just signed an emergency thing where basically they set all these rules where you can have people do it, but it can't be more than like 10% 10 of your student population, and there are all these stipulations about what this student has to meet in order to do that. Okay. So there's some red tape, but for the most part, no, that's not a thing. And um, they also came to the realize that we can't do both. You know what I mean? It's it's so hard on teachers to do both in person and trying to like remote teach. It's it's a yeah. very difficult thing, and everyone kind of suffers as a result of that. You know? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, so you know, <coughs> me getting sick was kind of the start of it, and um, a, another little part was I had both my friends Sonder and Colin who stayed with us. I don't know what it is. I feel like Weenie and I save. All of our hanging out until September. As soon as September hits, our lives get fucking crazy. We're going all over the place, hanging out with people. I mean, it was great because, you know, we went almost the entire year without hanging out with people. Um, so it was awesome to really see people. Um, and then I just kind of hit like a, like a content lull, which I know you've probably had in the past. And if there's any content creators in the chat you guys probably know of as well. Um, even if there's nothing wrong, there is just something that happens where you go, you know what? I just, 
don't feel like doing that. So, you know, I, I had six months where I had people scheduled for the podcast every single week. And then I went like a month just not scheduling or reaching out to anybody. I'm like, you know what? I'm just I'm going to take this opportunity, kind of chill out a little bit because I know once the once the winter time comes around, I'm going to have more free time. And um, have you had any lulls or loss of motivation since hitting partner? Or are you still riding it? I mean, I had a little bit of loss of motivation for because like it was maybe a little over a month after I made partner. I was not, it was actually about two months after I had that month straight of internet problems. Oh, that's right. And so like I could, and it was just, it was killing me because I was having to cancel streams and do all this other shit. And it was really frustrating and obviously got that fixed. But the other thing that's happened, that's a very real thing. I don't think it's talked about a whole lot outside of, um, I guess partners because you, you don't really experience it until then. There is a very real, for a lot of partners, not all, but there's a very real post-partner drop in viewership that happens like right after. And it's not insignificant. I, I would say anywhere between 10 to 20% of my viewership has gone down since making partner. Some of that attributed to the internet woes I was having. It's not just a numbers thing. And I, I, got, I understand that. Uh, but the other is just the simple things like, I used to have, which was both a blessing and a curse. For the longest time and well over a year, my percentage of viewerships that were raids hosts was pretty much 15% or greater every month. I was having a lot of raids and a lot of hosts. Now, while I still get them, it's like for the last few months, like after making partner, it's between like 5 and 8%. Wow. You just don't, you don't get nearly as many. And I don't know if that's, that might just be <sighs> anecdotal. I'm not saying that's every partner out there, or every person. I think in my particular case, there was probably people and 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 in other people's as well, um, that they're like, well, they made partner, and now I can find help somebody else because it, uh, of those that were rating that I think that are not rating as much were channels that were uh, not as not as high in viewership. You know, sure. Um, and so, and I get that. I get that understanding totally. I'm not, it's, it's the broadcaster's decision who they want to stream and uh, a raid or host. And I'm not saying I'm entitled to those at all. I just mean there, it is a real thing that I think that, um, that happens, you know? Absolutely. So. Do, now, do you see, have you noticed that people that might have been hosting and raiding while you were on your way up to partner, now that you've gotten partner, have suddenly stopped as well? I mean, nothing really stands out in my mind. I don't okay. think of any, any individual I can think of or broadcaster. And I, I wouldn't want to call them out anyway. I, not that I, that's what you're asking. Mm, mm. I know you're not. Um, but no, I can't think of anyone to mind. I, I will say, though, and I'm not, again, I'm not going to say anyone specific, but there has been a few people in the community that um, started acting and being a bit different following that. And, um, you know, more or less had to kind of, move them on their way out of the community. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, those things happen. I don't think I'm alone in that. And that's, it's, that's not just being part of That's just being a streamer. Sometimes you just outgrow relationships, but I don't, I got the feeling with some people afterwards, not, this is a very small percentage, but I got DMS and I've, I mean, I've had some people who I don't even consider myself barely acquainted with, that are asking me to do favors for them or ask for, you know, something particular because they know me. But I'm like, well, I know, but I, I may know you, but I don't really know you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yep. Um, but that's not, that's not the norm, of course. And honestly, it's, it, the biggest thing for me now is, um, to avoid burnout has been just really just trying to monitor my, make sure I get enough sleep and all that sort of stuff. Because I was talking to my wife the other day. I'm sorry if this is going a, a little tangential here, but that's the fucking podcast. I know. I was talking to my wife the other day and I, I said to her, I think it was Friday. And I was like, God, I want to go and do something. She looked at me and I looked at her and I said, but I know we, we really can't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. 
it's like I wanted to go do something, but you're you can't. Delta's out of control in my county as well, and it's fucking. It's like you don't feel safe going anywhere, and so in a way, Twitch has kind of become a little bit of a crutch for me. You know, yeah, it's helped me because like I am very much a social. I'm an extrovert. I, I enjoy very much being around people and going out and and doing social things. I like I like that. My wife is not so much like that. You know, she's more of an introvert. She's happy to stay home. And I'm okay with staying home. It's not like that. Like, I, I hate being around my family or my wife. It's not it at all. But I think one of the things that Twitch has provided at me, for me specifically lately that's kind of helped me from having that burnout is it's a place that I can be social. And I don't, I'm don't. i not getting that sort of thing at work because the only social stuff I'm getting is my students. I don't go right. I'm in my classroom 99% of the day, man. I'm not doing, I'm not doing sports anymore. So that's it. My friend who I used to eat lunch with like every day. He just, he's at another school now. So like, I don't even eat lunch. I eat lunch by myself. I just, I by myself and you know, alone in my own thoughts. And with the thoughts are the responses of teenage students throughout my fucking day. And that is something that's a huge change for me professionally and personally. And I, because from where I was at and interacting and, and doing things with coaching and doing all the other stuff with other people and having to do that to going to, well, basically it's just me. Right. You know? so. I have come to very much enjoy alone lunches. I never ever sit in the cat like our lunch room or our kitchen and eat. Like when I, when I'm in there, like snacking, and somebody comes in and sits down, I go like, "Oh my god, please, Christ, just just leave." I don't, I don't want to sit it. and I talk. Don't, I don't eat. I've always ate in a in my own classroom, but I used to have people that the the two guys that used to eat with me. Um, they one of them late every day. The other guy some days he would, but he he they both went to other schools this last year. They they left and now they're in different places and it's like oh well, i just it's not it's not terrible like i'm not trying to make you feel sorry for me i i don't <laughs> mind it too much it's just when you have all that time alone and i'm not interacting with students is not like me being social do you right. know what i mean like yep. i'm not oh, yeah. i'm trying you to be, be their yourself. teacher yeah i'm trying to be their teacher i'm not trying to be their friend i'm nice i'm friendly but i'm not trying to be their buddy i'm trying to make sure that they t learn a lesson or whatever it is that the focus is that we're doing it's not a, hey, you're my friend. I can talk to you about something on a personal level. I can't do that with any of them. And I don't do that with anyone now, you know? Right, yeah. Outside of Twitch, in a way. So it's it's just weird, you know? I, uh, I don't know if this is me just kind of changing as a person or or just getting older, but I seem to be, like, if anybody were to hit me up and say, hey... I'm coming into town. Do you want to hang out? I always say yes. I never say no for the sake of being an introvert, but I'm, I'm sort of kind of like an extrovert, but on my own terms where there, I go through these bouts where I just, I don't want to hang out with anybody. I, like I want to be your friend, but I can't give you time because there's so many other things that I also want to spend time on. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, so it, it always, it goes like up and down. Like I'm like, I love hanging out with people. And then I just get in these where I just like, I don't want to see anyone. Like my idea of a perfect weekend is having both Saturday and Sunday. When I wake up to go to bed free time, like I can do whatever the fuck I want from when I wake up on Saturday to when I go to bed on Sunday. Like, that is my idea of, like, a perfect weekend. I still obviously love my friends. I love seeing people. Um, I love hanging out. I don't really care to... Like, if someone's like, hey, do you want to go to the bar? I'm like, nah, no, not really. Do you yeah. want to go to the club? And now, like, hey, do you want to go to a speak? Yeah, absolutely, I do. Um, but that's kind of that's kind of where I, I draw the line. I just... I don't know. I, I can't really uh, I can't really get the the energy to go out to a bar anymore or ever. <laughs> well, I think COVID really changed a lot for that for me. And you know, nowadays it's going to be, it's just, I think coming to the realization that I was hopeful that things were going to be a little bit further along than they are right now, but unfortunately they're not. And yeah, yep. I, I got to just remind myself that you got to focus on what you can control and, and uh, you know, take it, take it just day by day. Yeah. 
What uh, what video games have you been playing over the past couple weeks, months? Um, I've been playing Dark Souls three. Uh, and I'm actually getting further and further in that one. Um, and I'm at, I beat. This was Wednesday. I beat three bosses in one night, which I was like, holy shit. Jesus Christ. I know. I was on a roll. Like, that never happens. Two is rare. Shit. I'm, some nights I won't even beat one boss. There might be multiple nights in a row I won't beat a boss. I beat three in one night. That's pretty bonkers. Yeah, I was. I was, And this is my first playthrough. So I was like, yeah. So Have you played, Did you play one and two? I played one and beat it. Two, I played mm, maybe about a quarter of the way through and just I didn't like it that much. Couldn't do it. Do, okay. I just couldn't do it. Um, and, uh, I've been playing Bloodborne. I kind of like, but I kind of don't like, I had a hard time. I've tried to play Bloodborne now, like twice, seriously try to get into it. I get really hung up pretty early in that game. And I know according to people that play Bloodborne, they're like, oh, that's the hardest part of the game. I'm like, wow, it's just like, it's so frustrating. You know, I keep having to do this shit over and over and finally I'm just like, ah, uh, uh, so I may get Bloodborne one more chance, but more than likely, I will probably try and do uh, Sekiro uh, at some point in the not too oh, distant future. Get yeah. back to that um, because I, I played that on release and all, and it made it about two thirds of the way through the game. Uh, didn't beat it, got stuck on a boss, and just never came back to it. And I think I, I might be able to do it now. So we'll see. What made you go back to Battletoads? Oh, the other day. Yeah, the other day. Just. Uh, just for shits and grins, you know, I, I kind of personally wanted to see how far I could make it just without, you know, and I made it all the way to stage nine. So, which was the, the part like this, it's like the second turbo tunnel. There's a second turbo tunnel. More or less. It's like a, it's not, it's like a lava thing where you're flying on this little plane and there's all these shit flying at you. But, but yeah, it's harder than the first one. So. Jimmy, I've never noticed this before, but the fact that your cord for your headphones is going across your body is giving me an anxiety attack right now. Why? Because it's the, the cord on the left side should go down to the left side of your body. And you got to come in. Uh, nobody can see what I'm talking about, but you got to go in across your chest well, like that's a because seatbelt. I'm leaning back. I don't like it. I don't have this plugged into an extender. You should. You need to get one for just. I for used me. to, but it was just too. The, I don't. I need a shorter extender. The one I had was too long. No. Oh, okay. And it was just like too much wire. How have the uh, How have the No Man's Sky days been for you? It's been fun, man. It's been fun to get back into that. Uh, they They just launched a new expedition. The only thing I don't really care for in that game is. I'm not a huge proponent of the base building. They they spend a lot building it up, and I know a lot of people love that. That's not why I play it, but I get why people love it, and it's cool that they have that, but whatever, you know. Um, but yeah, uh, and then just a variety of different retro games here and there. I, I did buy that new WarriorWare game for the Switch. It's oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, all right. It's all right. It's okay. It's fun, but it's not like... You know, I'm, I think it's the type of game that I'll probably make it all the way through, play it here and there, make it all the way through, and probably never touch it again. You know, I know in the past, um, streaming No Man's Sky for you has been kind of difficult because of the type of show that you put on when you're doing kind of your normal stick. Um, have you found that to become any easier in in recent weeks, or do you just kind of dedicate that as this is <coughs> this is the stream where I'm gonna. Just kind of zone out a little bit and just kind of chill with whoever shows up. I have been trying to get away from scheduling myself for specific things too much. And I usually try, what I've been doing lately is I usually give myself one stream a week where it's like, I'll just play whatever the fuck I feel like. You know, I mean, that's and that's what No Man's Sky streams often are. It's like, I just I feel like playing No Man's Sky. I'm going to play some No Man's Sky. And... I ask people sometimes, you know, and, and for, I put polls on some stuff to do, but there are some days where I just want, I feel like playing a certain game and um, just, I just do it. And I, you know, it's like that tweet you had about, hey, you know, you don't like it? Go fuck yourself. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. You know? And that's how uh, I feel. That, uh, that TikTok got a little bit of traction. I'm, I'm so happy to see... Some people join in and be like, yes, this is exactly how I run my shit. I'm like, yes, that's what I want to hear. Because it's especially for people that are early on 
Um, it is it is incredibly easy to get sucked into doing what you think your community wants all of the time. Mm -hmm. um, what game do you want me to play? What time do you want me to stream? Do you like when I eat on stream or not? Right? You just like you ask all these questions to try and make your place the most accepting and the most inviting as it can be. And what ends up happening is you alienate people because you're taking opinions of one or two people and then applying them to your stream. And really, you should just be running it how you want to run it. Yeah. Um, it uh, creates quite the conundrum in your in your community. Yeah, and you know, obviously, there are limits to that, of course. And I think that one of the great things that I think I did when I started was being a variety caster out the gate you know and i i put a lot more focus on retro in the last two years but i still play plenty of modern games as well i never mm -hmm. wanted to be shoehorned into just doing one type of game category right I've seen that happen i've seen that happen to other streamers that i enjoy and their viewership just tanks because the the growth is great initially but boy that's tough when the game either dies or you know you got to move on to another game or something right I would not survive uh, as a caster or mentally to go through that. And, yeah. you know, there's been quite a few games over the over the course of my streaming career. Rocket League, um, Call of Duty, Battlefield, right? Um, those games that I played hundreds, if not thousands of hours. And, you know, I gave them a run for their money on Twitch. Like, I've played more Rocket League on stream more than any other game, probably, yeah. right? And there was a small time where I'm like, you know what? Yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll be a Rocket League streamer. And then after like the third or fourth month, you're like, oh my god, am I? Did I really just dedicate my streaming career to this one game? <laughs> and I I can't I can barely even hold on to a single category. Like even if I was to be a FPS streamer, that would still be incredibly difficult for me as a creator. No, I um. I get it. It's it's difficult. And there are people that do it and that are very successful at it. I'm not saying that it's impossible to do. I mean, right. it's it's certainly a risk reward and the growth for being a variety streamer is so slow. And we've talked about these things before and how t on today's Twitch, you really can't grow on the platform unless you're bringing in views outside the platform, you know? It's discoverability is just so absolute shit rotten on Twitch that it's very difficult. The only way you really get discovered on Twitch is by being in the top of the category. Here's right. the reality. Most yep. people aren't going to scroll down that far to find a stream they want to watch if that category is populated by a lot of people. So if you're not in like the top 10 or 20 in that category, you, most people aren't going to keep going to find if they're looking by game. So yeah. most people don't scroll at all. And yeah, so you, they might just look and see what the first group is that they see, and then they're going to pick there. And that's assuming... They want to watch someone new and not somebody that they aren't already following. It, right, exactly. I anecdotally cannot remember the last time I went searching for a streamer, yeah. right? Like actually going into a category and going, I'm going to find a new streamer to watch today. Mm -hmm. And I think that I think that part of the culture is somewhat dead. I, and I, I don't know if that's a product of Twitch or product of just influencers and content creators in general. Um, you know, like even if I were to narrow down the people that I follow, I can't watch all of the content that all of my favorite people put out. It's it's oh, yeah. fucking impossible. Oh yeah. Um, and I I'm never I'm never sitting there going, man, I have some free time in my content to watch panel. Uh, let's go see if I can fill that. Right. It's, it doesn't happen. I feel like, and the reason why you probably don't, and the reason for the same reason I generally don't at all anymore is usually the content comes to you, and like you'll yeah. find word from about enough from this channel by a, a some other streamer that you watch that raids another channel or a, a, some a clip you see on TikTok or whatever, so or on Twitter, whatever social media, Reddit, you'll find something and you'll end up finding the content that you you know that you end up wanting to consume. So, and it's, it also says for how shitty it is for searchability on Twitch when you're on the platform itself. And generally speaking, I mean, I know they have a new thing now where they have suggestions and stuff like that, but it's, I do check those out. Yeah, when I go sometimes. to the Twitch homepage, I look at it. I at least sometimes. look. 
Yeah, sometimes I look at it too, but um, it's still, it's not perfect at all. And there are times where they have people in the suggestion that I'm already following. And I always think that's weird as fuck. Yeah, yeah. It's a glitch. It's, it's glitchy. Oh, Twitch. We should... I, I you should watch this stream. And I'm like, I already follow this channel. <laughs> I literally have it open in another tab like, already, Twitch. I'm like, okay, Twitch, thanks. Uh, with, with all the things that have gone on in the past month, you know, with the more adpocalypse shit, um, the Twitch do better uh, with ads and the hate rays and stuff, mm -hmm. Have has your morale, has your Twitch morale lowered at all or are you still like i love twitch everything is going on as normal i mean i've been disappointed in twitch for a while i mean i'm you know the sad thing is is that i'm I'm kind of almost numb to all the stuff that's going on in the way that i'm not surprised by it these are things we've been talking about for some time you know this the stuff that went on this last month on this platform with the hate raids and all the all the other with the the new ad system stuff that's coming out a lot of it by Twitch just seems so like the PR response has not been good it just hasn't been very good and i'm not surprised um because again it's it's the culture of Twitch in so many ways has changed and and where it's more about money, which again I I understand it's a business, but I think fundamentally, you look at all these big creators too that are leaving the platform now to go to YouTube. That too, yeah. And I know that these, I mean, these are some of the biggest creators that Twitch has, and I know that that sort of thing opened a few eyes. Will it make a difference in the end? I guess that's dependent on what YouTube does. They got a long way to go still to like kind of. Um, match the sort of what Twitch had uh, that was special. I don't know if Twitch still has. I think Twitch is they're in a weird spot right now, man. I don't, I I know they're the giant right now when it comes to streaming platforms, but I feel like their grip is starting to loosen. Even though they don't have, I guess you could say Facebook and and Facebook uh, Live or gaming and YouTube is what they. Their main competition. So, yep. oh, who yeah. knows? Who knows? It has been very interesting. Um, I just, maybe it's because I'm not involved with any other platform as much as I am balls deep in Twitch, but it does seem like why, why is there such a lack of communication on things? And it, my, the only assumption that I can come to is that there are some extreme. Um, business ethics or like business strategies that are inhibiting or prohibiting Twitch from acting on certain things just because of the the effects that it could have on stock prices or owners or something, right? There's something so business defined that I just can't understand. But it's just crazy to me how there's such a lack of understanding and the how tone deaf they can be because I know it's it's easy to say, like, look at their Twitter account and be like, holy shit, Twitch, you're fucking tone deaf. But really what's tone deaf is the social media slash PR part of the Twitch company, right? There could be hundreds of Twitch employees on the other side that are screaming for them to do something, but then they just then they just don't. Um, but for whatever reason, it just really seems like they're just not catching on and and i i don't know why it's beyond me yeah i'm not a i don't really know a whole lot about marketing and pr and that but as a part of their platform as well as a consumer of their platform and i'm it's disappointing and i hope that they can start turning it around and for my you know selfishly because i i, I want the platform to do to, you know, to do better, but right. Um, it's never been clear in my mind now that it's, it's very important as a creator to find, to, you know, you may want to have a, have an escape route. You might want to have a backup plan because it could be next day. Twitch could be the next mixer at some point who fucking knows, you know, could just be here one day and gone the next. Um, I'm not saying that's going to happen right anytime soon, but 
who you know things crazy things happen who knows who knows um yeah that's all i got I, I i i'm also not sure if it's just kind of like the the dullness that covid puts on life but i find i'm finding it hard to get excited about twitch things just because of everything that has gone on right and and i i obviously am saying that from a point of privilege because I am not a marginalized creator, somebody that has been on the butt end of nonstop attacks, right? Like Twitch has just been okay for me. What Twitch has been fucking hell for a lot of people just going through absolute hell, just trying to stream on this platform. And it's like, man, can't you just lend a fucking hand to some of these people and, and just help them out a little bit? Um, but obviously, I'm like we're I'm still live on this platform, right? Like you, you love it to an extent, right? Right. Hmm. Yeah, man. It's a uh... Twitch do better. Twitch do better. Seriously, they got yeah. some fucking changing to do. Um, speaking of Twitch, uh, there are a couple changes that have happened in the past couple of weeks. One, they kind of revamped their refund feature. Um, so a couple months back, uh, they re revamped being able to get a refund for your subs. And one of the options that you could select was, I just wanted a shout out, and then you could get a refund for your sub. Um, I don't know the specifics because I forgot to link the article in the script, um, but they did make some changes to where it's a lot harder to get a refund if you're just trying to troll. So it, it does seem like they were able to go back on that and make some changes, because um, I know that was kind of a, a huge scare for broadcasters um because it, it seems like lately uh and i don't know if you've seen a hit from this jimmy with the local pricing for subs kicking in um there has been a huge impact for some streamers with their revenue and so not only do we have like the shit with ads that's going on right now you have people that are making less from subs just because of those changes which obviously benefit the the end user who's subbing um but it's a revenue loss for those people uh, and then you have the, the refund feature that came around. And it almost seems like people are making less money for doing the same amount, if not more work on Twitch, yeah. where kind of before Twitch was kind of on the up and up with like with bounties and Twitch Prime uh, gaming, right? With gifted subs, it was like, oh, there's more opportunities for you to make revenue. And now it kind of seems like we're on the, the trickle downwards as well. No, uh, I haven't really noticed much in a loss in sub revenue. Nothing that was really noticeable to me. Um, okay. Uh, but then again, uh, I would even say sub revenue is maybe only half of my revenue at the of the month. That I at most okay is what I would make for sub revenue. The rest is from uh, bits, tips, or merchandise. So. Still selling a good amount of merch? Uh, I need to update the merch store because it's been nearly a year since I have, and I need to put. I've been putting a lot of stuff off lately because of my job, right? Um, but I have a list of things that I'm trying to do and whatnot. And now that I'm back into the saddle of working again, where I'm not dead ass tired when I get home, like mm -hmm. last week was the first week where I wasn't just totally dead tired, but I still was like, ah, oh, freaking. I've been there before. I've been tired, so I know how to deal with it. But last week was the first week where I was like, "All right, I'm fine. I'm back. I'm back." You know, like yeah. where I'm not, you know, just totally beat down at the end of the day. Are you trying to maintain your Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday stream schedule? Yeah, generally. Although I haven't seen any. I actually might take a few days off this week because okay. I, I hadn't I hadn't announced anything officially yet. Um, but I was thinking I may just because I have a three day weekend. And instead, I could just wait to stream and just do Thursday, Friday, Saturday this week, you know, and uh, and just take a few days off. And I think I could probably use it, you know. Probably, yeah, because you have been going hard. Like, I can't rem I can't even remember the last time I saw you cancel a stream. And you are usually live Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Mm -hmm. You're, I don't know how the fuck you do it sometimes. It, sometimes it's just pure adrenaline. Yeah. Like, I get, I'm not going to lie, man. I will come in and I will sit down to stream and get in my chair and be like, <sighs> and I'll just sit here like this for about like 30 seconds. Just, 
just trying to channel some energy, you yeah. know, because I've give I I'm not the type of teacher in my job that I was out of my I was out of voice like my first two weeks uh back to teaching. Like I was hoarse. If you came in, I know you heard me a few times. I was really hoarse on super like, oh, you're sick. I'm like, no, dudes, it's because I'm teaching all day. I'm energetic yep. in the class usually. I'm loud. And then you do all that all day long when you teach six lessons. And then you come home with your family, do that. And then you stream and try to be loud and energetic. I only have so many words to give before this sucker starts to give out. You know? Right. Um, but, you know, I like I mentioned before, it's been a lot of a... I'm always excited, to because it's been a nice way where I get a chance to socialize with other adults, you know? Um, and so that's kind of made it, it's, it's kind of helped even me out. And, um, but yeah, this week I'm at a point now where I'm like, yeah, I could take a couple days. That way I could just do a couple things that I've been putting off to do off stream, like update the merch store and do stuff like that. You know, I, um, I've even been thinking about going down to two days. Uh, just, there, there are some days, man, and I, I know that you fucking work just as much as I do, but, man, it is really, really hard for me to to come home and, and go live some days. Um, and and it's, it's kind of a me problem because I give so much of my energy to my day job. Like, I, I choose to work an hour or two later or to, like, go in early when I shouldn't have to. Um, and, you know, that that's a story in itself, but... Uh, yeah, it's like I've been thinking, okay, like, okay, how do I balance streaming on Twitch while doing a podcast, while trying to create content? Because I'm really trying to focus on both TikTok and YouTube right now. And it no. just, it really just eats into the, into the live time. Um, Dude, I, I don't know how you do and make all that content for those platforms. Like I'm, I'm definitely way more suited for short form content than I am YouTube content. Yep. Which I, I love about TikTok. But at the same time, like, I can't ever come up with any sort of regular ideas. Like, most of my TikToks, like, the ones that have the most views are less than 20 seconds. And it's just a random fucking thought that popped into my head that this would be funny. Yep. I can't, I don't, I can't sit around and just come up with shit like that. It just happens. Yeah. You know? Like, that's it's just what, like, that's how I do it. And, and, you know, but I'll go a week or two and not post a single thing because I can't think of anything that I want to post. Yep. I've, so I've had that's that my so many times. But see, that's the thing is on Twitch, I have the ability. Now, obviously, if I had somebody who I knew could make great TikTok content for me and do that on the side, I would have them do it. But I don't that I can, you know, do that regularly and, and pay um, to, for them to do that. And when it comes to Twitch, one of the great things that you I have going for me, at least, and for a lot of other streamers to do it this way is you get to interact off the chat. Like, the chat creates the content. Yep. When I can create content all day when I have something that someone said in chat, and whether it's just shit that I just totally go off, I'll, someone will say something, and I'll pretend like they meant it a different way intentionally. You know, you do the same shit. Yep. You know? And uh, it's, it's fun. You know, it's a fun way to do that. When you have to sit there and think, what would be good to put on of this platform that's going to be funny. Mm -hmm. I, I never can do anything by brainstorming. It literally has to just be like, oh, this would be funny, and then I'll just do it. And there it is. That is something... That's kind of like a privilege of having a grown stream. So oh, yeah. This is, this is 100%... A me problem. No, <laughs> I guess I no. Could say. It, it, I don't think it's a you problem. I think it's no. just, it's one of the good things a about. good thing about streaming. And yeah. if you have an audience of more than five regulars, probably you have this problem. Yes. I know it's not just me. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that it's a, it's a good problem to have. It really is. It makes it so much easier. And that is the hardest thing for a lot of Twitch streamers to get is that core audience, uh, uh, that group that's going to keep coming back. And keep providing you with not just the confidence that people are enjoying your content so you can keep coming back, but to the confidence and the practice to be able to generate conversation and flow and jokes and everything. And uh, it's, yeah, it's it makes a huge difference on, on that platform. I almost guarantee that every single streamer in here right now has asked advice from a seasoned streamer and they've said, just keep talking. 
You know, like the the cliche uh, advice of t- just talk like nobody's there. You know, we've all been there. And I think the reality is, I think the reality of season streamers is if you were to rip away our channel and have us start over, a lot of us would fall on our fucking face with an empty chat. Mm-hmm. And um, just going back to a couple things that you've talked about that you and I both have is there are some days where you can be head in your hand, so fucking tired and exhausted, and then you can start stream and people show up immediately and you're off to the races, right? Mm-hmm. Like your tiredness is gone. That is a privilege of having a, a built stream or a grown community. That's just one of the things that comes with yes. um, growing your stream. And same thing with just creating ch- content in general. When you are live and there is a constant flow of people talking, it is so much easier to stream. You know, it, it's. I'm sure there are plenty of people that look up to the big streamers and you're like, holy shit, how do they do it? I, I, you know, like whenever I have people in chat, like it's, it's never flowing. It's because it's, a, it's easier for us that, and that is the goddamn honest truth. Um, and it's just one of the things that it's kind of hard to kind of hard to tell that to somebody, right? Like if you have somebody who's averaging in between one and three viewers and they don't have anybody at the start of the stream and anybody at the end, mm-hmm. um, like you, <laughs> when you're looking up and you're looking at other streamers and you're like, holy shit. Like they have 20 to 30 people and the number isn't necessarily like the, the most, the deciding factor of whether you had a good stream or not. But when you get to the point where you have somebody talking in chat from start to beginning, even if it's the same person or like two people, just having somebody responding in chat, the entire stream changes the dynamic of your channel like tenfold. Yeah. Um, And it's, it's just something that unfortunately you just get, eventually when you get to that point um and it's it's definitely like if you were to take away my channel right now and have me start over from scratch um i'd probably follow my fucking face because we've we've gotten complacent with the size of our communities and you, there is an expectation like you and i know that when we start a stream there's a good chance that our energy will double by you know we'll just double right because we know people are going to be there when we go live and that's uh, that's not a luxury that everybody has no, you're right, and and uh, but it's it's not just like uh, you know it's it's one of those that's the thing about taking the time to grow your stream and being consistent and doing all those things that we did to grow our stream. Although mm-hmm. incidentally, the things you and I did to grow our stream years ago to kind of get it to the point where it, it is self sustaining and having a core audience wouldn't be the same things you would do today. Yeah. And that's what's a little weird about the the change that, you know, on this platform, because the truth is, unless you are very unique in some certain way to make you stand out from other streams, if you're just somebody else with a microphone and, you know, you don't even have to have the best video, you know, yep. your audio now in 2021, if your audio sucks, no one's going to stick, stick around. But I think most people know that, you know, um, I, I love that say, TikTok embellishes that, by the way. Like, I love that TikTok doesn't give a shit about the video, the audio, how much text is on the screen. If mm-hmm. that shit is funny or informative, people gobble that shit up. Mm. Yo, I, I think... I think it's just... I, I don't know what I could tell somebody today to grow. Like, what would be the best advice to give a, a, a person that was just... Averaging one to three viewers on Twitch and trying to get things going. I would say that being able to generate conversation is the best thing you could practice when yep. you're starting out. Being able to verbalize what's happening. And it's going to feel weird. It felt weird when I did it, you know? I mean, just it, it's one of those things that everyone goes through. But it helps you learn to get over not feeling weird about talking, mm-hmm. uh, which it's going to feel awkward. And then it's also going to help you, too, because you're going to have to learn how to juggle doing more than one thing. Eventually, you're going to have different alerts going off or different whatever. you got a game going on you're trying to play. you got, you know, so over so many conversations going on in the chat room. Oh, maybe you just got raided down the road and all these other people are coming in with a wall of text. You know, these are the kind of if you have those fundamental tools where you're able to carry a conversation no matter what's going on or not going on in the chat, then you're ahead of most other streamers on Twitch because it's a, it's a skill that 
it is hard to develop. And it usually for most, it takes time to develop. By the way, chat, when I started streaming, I used to have 25 minute countdowns. <laughs> Just waiting for people to fucking show up. You can preheat an oven and make some fucking cheese sticks by the time oh my your God. stream started. And when and when the, nobody showed up, I would just reset the timer. <laughs> oh, if you assholes could have seen what I looked like in my first couple of years, oh, you would throw up. You would be like, there's no fucking way that this is the same person before me. Um, and uh, there's a, another thing that a lot of you know about, um, but... Whenever chat was too slow, I would always say that chat was broken. Like, hey, but so you know, guys, if you're trying to chat, it chat's broke. It's chat's just it's broke. not working right now. Um, so like, when you get a chance, just try it again. I'll let you know if it works. <laughs> and uh, and that's where that emote that Weenie puts in chat right now. Um, it's, yeah, broken. I, it's broken. It's broken. Just like, hey, can anybody? Can you guys type in chat right now to see to see if it works? Oh, hello, calling out lurker, calling out lurker. Yeah. All the good old days. <laughs> oh, man. I was so cringy, dude, when I first got onto this platform. And and as a viewer, before because I started watching Twitch in, like, the fall of 2014 was when I started watching Twitch. I didn't start streaming till well, I streamed, like, from my own personal account for a few weeks, quit that, made middle-aged stream. But it was, like, January of 2015, made middle-aged stream in February 2015, but I've been watching Twitch as a viewer for months. And uh, and then when I started streaming, I did all those fucking things you shouldn't do. Like go into the other streamer's channel and be like, yo, I just started streaming now. You're one of my, you know, and like, oh my God. I was so fucking cringe. Oh, If only a oh man, there, there are certain times, like obviously I have highlights archived from mm -hmm. the early days but i wish i could just have like regular ass stream days because i don't have too many vods from all the way back then um but holy shit i didn't save i have high i have clips i haven't saved a lot of the cringe is gone forever um i didn't care to and part of it i saved enough to remember where i came from Sure. But I don't need to revisit all of the fucking bad shit. I do still have the save clip of how fucking bad my damn audio sounded when my blue Yeti was facing literally the opposite direction. It was supposed to be for about eight months. And this is one of the hardest things that I try to do my best to drill home is when we're, we're such in a hardware centric bubble where it's all about the best audio, the best video, the hardware, all that stuff. My best friend streamed with his microphone facing the wrong way for eight months, and he's a Twitch partner. Sometimes it just doesn't fucking matter. Like, yeah, <laughs> will, a, will a great microphone kind of scoot you forward a little bit? Maybe, but also you can have it facing the wrong fucking way and still somehow build a community. Now, in my defense, uh, also in the people, I, I wasn't averaging anywhere that year when I first year of streaming on Twitch, because I, I got that microphone a few months after I started streaming, because I streamed on my console for like three months before I built my first computer. Oh my God. And when I built that computer, there's evidence of, in my, one of my old clips, you can hear it. It's, the microphone sounds like tinny and echoey because it's facing the wrong way. But you can hear this sound in the background. It's like a ding, ding, ding. It's like a, it almost sounds like an AC sound. That is the fan, my CPU fan, that I didn't have the cord out of the way enough and it's hitting the cord. Eventually it would cut through that cord and my computer would just fucking <laughs> shut down because I had no CPU cooler on it. Oh and then I, ins my I installed a, uh, the, the Evo 212, whatever, uh, afterwards. And yeah, it kept, <laughs> like I was streaming one day and then all of a sudden it was got real quiet and then everything just fucking blue screened. And then I looked and, and I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I look and I see like, why isn't the fan moving? And I see the frayed wire on the side of the glass. I'm like, holy shit. My, that's what that sound was. <laughs> Oh my God! And you're a partner now, Chad. Yes. L come listen to this fucking come story. A long way, okay. I, oh my God. This is that was like six years ago, bro. That was Feels like it. that was six. That's how far I've come in six years. Okay. 
It should be a testament to you more than anything. How many times have you had to help troubleshoot? Not in recent years, but like my first like four years of streaming. How many times have you had to help me troubleshoot my fucking audio problems? Oh, a few, a few times. A couple times. More than, more than I can count. Yeah, yeah. One time you did it while I was live, which was kind of awesome. I do remember that. Yeah, that was before we were fucking or before we were hanging out in real life. No, it wasn't. <laughs> was no. it? No, I had already. Yeah, we had already hung out a few times. Oh, my God. Yeah. Good times. Good times indeed. Um, I think we had. Yeah, we had already talked about that. I'm going to say uh, this just because it's an off. But if you are a affiliate, some affiliate is it all affiliates. Do you have access to this? The ad, uh, yeah. new ad part manager? I believe so, yep. I think it's for all affiliates. And it was beta first. Now it's everyone. All yep. partners and affiliates now have a new ad manager where you can, like, pick specific times to run ads and whatnot. I didn't even know. I had been paying attention. I didn't really know this was a thing because I'd never run ads ever. And I know. But I know that some people use them and they in breaks and whatever. So that's the thing now. But... I just I brought this up because there is a partner Discord that's out there that's like just like Twitch partners that are on there. And the only reason I bring it up, I can't really talk about the specifics because there is an NDA. But you would think that in the partner Discord, you would find some measured takes of, you know, intelligent and good conversation. But no, no, there's a lot of bullshit in there. <laughs> Uh, like people calling each other out, whining about uh, like different stuff. I'm like, oh, why are y'all fighting in the partner Discord? What the fuck? Uh, anyway, when are you doing? I just thought it was side? funny. I just thought it was weird because I was like, of all the places you're gonna have a like a public like back and forth, like just take that shit to Twitter or somewhere, man. Not in the partner Discord. Jesus Christ. And you know that like some of those people are at work, right? At their desk, just yeah. fucking furiously typing on the phone. <laughs> I, I don't understand. Like what? There's some toxic people out there, man. Always wanting to fight. Yes, there is. Um, uh, speaking of fighting, ooh. Um, this, this wasn't necessarily drama. That I happened to get myself into, but it was just, it was an interesting conversation. So maybe one to two weeks ago, there was somebody on Twitter, like a, a popular tweet came through my for you page on Twitter and it said something along the lines of Twitch should release. Twitter has a for you page. I'm just, just being facetious. Son of a bitch. The, my, my feed, my, my timeline. I guess that's what Twitter calls it. Uh, there was a, a tweet that said something along the lines of Twitch should come out with a rank in between affiliate and partner. That's easier to get something with an average viewership of 30 to 35. And we can call it rising partner a rising star or something like that. And I kind of I got a little snarky with my response, but kind of using like an example or an analogy of my tweet was if I was somebody who called the Olympics and said, Hey, uh, Hey, the bronze medals kind of just too hard to get. Can we, can we come up with something in between like losing and being a bronze, like something maybe like, uh, like tin or aluminum, like that'd be great. Um, and uh, essentially calling it a participation trophy, right? Like I, as somebody who, has been trying to get partner ever since I started streaming eight years ago. Do not understand the mindset of I need it to be easier because it's too difficult and there should be something below partner. And what I didn't realize was the following day, that person who made the original tweet subtweeted about me and kind of oh, twisted. Yeah. Kind of twisted my words a little bit to make it seem like I said something that I didn't really say. And the community just rallying behind her, right? Like, oh, what a piece of shit. Probably not even a streamer. He's never done anything like good in his life ever, right? Just he probably doesn't even have any hair. Right. Just shitting in my mouth, right? <laughs> and so what I did 
was I went through those replies and I replied to them just trying to provide extra context or attempting to start a conversation. I probably replied to like six or seven different people. One of them replied, right? All of these kids talking shit. And then as soon as I pop up and say, hey, I'm the person she was talking shit about. Do, do you want to discuss this further? Crickets, dude. Fucking crickets. Nothing from the subtweeter. Nothing from her community. I'm like, you know what? This is why people fucking like start bullshit drama with each other is because when people come forward to try and have legitimate, intelligent conversations to like provide perspective or try to see where you're coming from, people are like, oh, no, I can't do that. I just I need to talk shit silently in my corner. And then when I'm faced with the, the important shit, I'm just going to turn away. So that that was a fun thing that I had embarked on for a few days. Um, do you believe that there should be a rank below partner, Jimmy, now that you've got partner? I don't, I think maybe this person, their intention was finding a way to increase visibility. I, I, I look at this as a situation where, you know, I don't, I don't know if they necessarily wanted it as a participation trophy. I mean, I see, I can see the other side of this. I can see where they're trying to identify, Hey, it's kind of like, trending on Twitch sort of thing. You're right, you know? But how do you really say what kind of live content is trending? Like, I don't know. I mean... You can't. Yeah, it's it's difficult. So, I don't know. I think that the idea itself, at least on upon first glance, it seems like it could be something that's reasonable, but there's a reason why they have clearly defined standards for viewership and whatnot. And... Whether or not that that metric is fair or not, that is what the metrics that's being used. So do I think that there needs to be a, yet another identifying mark? I mean, there's already not a whole lot that separates affiliates and partners outside of a few things, you know? You have more emotes, you have guaranteed quality options, you got a couple other little perks, but other than that, it's not, I mean, your money-making potential is not that much higher, really. You know, it's one of the it's reasons really why- not. That's why they made the bar to entry for affiliates so low is because they want, they realize for every sub you make, that's $2 and 50 cents for them. So they wanted that affiliate bar low and the ones that, you know, rise to the top will eventually be what their metric is for partner, you know? Um, and, uh, I mean, that's kind of my thoughts on it. When you are averaging 25 to 30 people and the, the quality of the content that you were creating at that point in time, would you have considered yourself a partner, like partner worthy? I mean, do you think I, you had the qualities to separate yourself from the other 500,000 broadcasters that are affiliates? I don't think it was until I really stepped away from what I was doing initially on Twitch to what I'm doing now on Twitch mm -hmm. that I felt like I was doing enough to be considered worthy of being a, a Twitch partner. Being unique enough and being something that not everyone else was doing and something that would stand out in a, in a sense. So, um, and I guess I was still averaging that for several months and I didn't know where it was going to go, you know? Sure. I, didn't, I didn't know. It was a big risk that I took and it paid off. But at the same time, it was either that or, you know, I was, I didn't want to lose my passion. I was like, look, I gotta, I've been doing the same thing for five years on Twitch. It's time to change something. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. It's time. It was time. I had to sit down and fundamentally look at what was it that I was having a hard time with personally doing? How could I fix that? How could I make it more engaging? And it turned out it's, uh, becoming a beer. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? Who knew that turning yourself into a Who drink? Who knew that becoming, I didn't even know what a VTuber was. And so I'd been doing it for a year, <laughs> you know, and I didn't even, I didn't even really know. And, um, and now it's become kind of a big thing on Twitch. Like there's a lot. Now, most of them are like, like the waifu girls, you know, but, uh, I mean, your favorite. Yeah. I just, which I don't have a problem with, not my personal type of content, but, uh, it is funny when I pull up the VTuber tag and I'll see like my icon and then like all these. <laughs> Like waifu, beautiful women, <laughs> oh, waifu yeah. girls, and then there's a fucking yellow beer in the middle of them. <laughs> it's funny. Do, do you consider yourself the exception or the rule? 
What do you mean? When, when it comes to being a successful broadcaster and a partner broadcaster on Twitch. I don't know, man. I, I think it's... Twitch is such a weird... Twitch is such a weird place. I have seen some of the most talented people on the platform that I think are super talented that I don't think get the viewership that they, I think they should have. Um, and then I've seen people who I think are absolute garbage have <laughs> ridiculously high viewership. Yeah. So that's a really tough question for me to answer. I don't, I don't know. I think I'm lucky enough to have garnered an audience that feels like I can provide them with some type of levity or, you know, humor, insight, whatever it is. Um, uh, you know, to them, worth coming back. And I enjoy it because it allows me a chance to be social. It allows me a chance to clown around and be try and be funny. And, you know, it's it's a it's a great creative outlet and hobby. And, um, but yeah, exception or rule, I could, fuck, I don't know. I feel like there's a million different things that could have happened differently, and I'm not where I'm at right now. You right. Know, it's, it's, sometimes you got to say there's, there's certainly some, a little bit of luck involved too. Which I, I I think there may be uh, a little bit of a little bit of that. I'm not saying that was the the major thing, but um, there was certainly some luck involved. I think part of the luck factor is there are people whose passions and personalities automatically make them shine brighter than other people. Right? Like somebody who has a passion for. Oregon Trail and only Oregon Trail, right? Even though they might be fucking hilarious and charismatic and they create content on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, right? Like Oregon Trail isn't necessarily going to be the top thing watched. Um, but then you have Timmy who plays whatever Battle Royale is popular at the time, plays it for 10 hours a day and does it just perfectly right super charismatic very funny somehow you know how there's some streamers who crazy shit just happens to them and like they're able to make content out of those things happening right there's just that sort of luck to it where like okay maybe the thing that you grew up loving isn't popular on twitch but it might be a fucking star on tiktok but right. like everybody wants to be a successful they want to try and make their number one thing successful on twitch and m myself included right like i fucking love this platform i love live streaming but maybe what i want to do and how i want to do it isn't the best for twitch and that's why i haven't grown and i think a lot of people have to to ask themselves that question like okay even though i want this so badly and i feel like i'm a good fit am i a good fit for this platform i think you are i think the matter is just finding the way to grow the audience the way you want to now. It's a lot yep. harder to grow an audience doing, in my opinion, it's generally harder to do an, a grow an audience when you take games out of the equation, you know? A hundred percent. Yep. Because you don't have those, that natural interest of things. Like you're going into a much more niche territory if you're getting into tech and talk shows and that sort of stuff, which it is still a broad audience for those things. I'm not denying that, mm -hmm. but that audience doesn't necessarily frequent Twitch as much. Right. Right. You know? Um, and so it's, it's trying to get those people to this platform for, for yourself. That is, that's your new challenge now. And I see you've had a lot of success doing that from TikTok. Um, oh, I mean the making the switch over to just chatting content has been amazing for me. Um, and my, I've, I ignore the numbers for years, but my just chatting streams, and my podcast always did better viewership wise than than my gaming shit. But I just kept gaming over and over, just praying that some that people would find my gaming shit more fun than my just chatting shit. Like you know even, what your problem is, dude? You're too good. Just I'm too I'm good too good games. of a gamer. If you're if you were <laughs> like almost comically bad at games in many ways like I am, then you probably could garner a little more of an audience. Maybe, you know, you might just have to throw a few games here and there. Maybe you might see your viewership go back up, you know? Dude, who knew that playing Battletoads terribly for a month straight would do better on Twitch 
than getting than beating Turbo Tunnel without dying within eight hours. What the fuck is wrong with you, Twitch chat? Hey man, I'm just saying. I just had a really good There's a lot that. more levels to Battletoads. There it's is. It's not too late. Okay. There is. Um, but no, the the switch has been awesome. And my problem was early on enough, I didn't focus on YouTube and TikTok. Like I should have I should have switched all of my other content over to the tech, j just chatting shit as well. Uh, when I first made this switch on Twitch, so I'm I'm starting to do that now. And again, the growth and and the platform conversions I'm seeing are insane. Um, but again, like hey, it it took me eight years to fucking to realize that. Um, but like as far as live streaming goes, nothing has changed from three years ago. Like there isn't any. It, you know, it's not like a fad. Streaming isn't a fad that just came and went. Like it's still fucking here. Uh, so, chat, fuck up for three or four years. Don't worry about it, and just f fucking jerk off. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. And then you know, uh, it's it's bit by it's just bit by bit. You don't have to. It's not gonna be overnight. Uh, and like I said, for most people, it's it's definitely not gonna be overnight. It's gonna take. It's going to take some time. Unless, again, unless you have something that you're offering that is so unique, it's just going to draw these people in right away. But that yep. is not the vast majority of people that are starting to stream on Twitch. So, And we've and we've seen it happen, right? Somebody comes brand new onto the platform, and they just fucking explode, right? But, but almost all the time, they're bringing another platform with them when that happens. It's, it's rare that it's they just start out on Twitch, and then that happens. That doesn't really happen. Yep. Yeah, very, very rarely. Um, hey, you want to jump into some Q and A? Any other topics you want to get into? Good. Okay. Golden. First one from first one from Rosalind. What would be your recommendation for desk chairs since gamer chairs are obsolete and absolute horde shit, and <laughs> and have been wrecking backs of everyone who sit at their computers for long periods of time? Hmm. Well, I can. If you're on a budget, uh, I can recommend this. The respawn chair I'm sitting in. Um, it's called, I can't remember the name of it, it's like an office style chair. It, it parts of it are cheap. It's got like the, the armrests are kind of cheap plastic or whatever, but it's, it is got a very nice, uh, support and it's relatively inexpensive. Uh, and it's better than the last office chair that I had. Uh, now if you're on the other end, like knackers now, if you're looking for a really something better, he could tell you, uh, what he's using. Obviously, one of my my first recommendations is spend as much money uh, on a chair as you do a mattress, right? But that's not feasible for everybody. Um, you always want to look at chairs that have ergonomics in mind. And unfortunately, if you go to OfficeDepot.com and you put an ergonomic chair, you're just going to get a bunch of chairs that say ergonomic because they know that people are looking for something that's going to be better for them. Like, um, hey, look. Billy, I got you an ergonomic chair for your birthday. Yep. And it's, yep. yeah. Uh, unfortunately, chairs are quite like mattresses where there aren't a lot of cheap, good chairs that are actually, actually good for your back. Um, and this is going to be kind of weird to say, but the chairs that are uncomfortable, unless you're sitting in one position, are the best chairs to have because they force you to correct your posture to sit correctly. Um, so I personally, Human Scale, um, Herman Miller, uh, there's actually, a, I don't know the brands off the top of my head, both Office Max, Staples, Office Depot, they have some premium, like four to, or three to $500 ergonomic minded chairs um, that are, I fucking, I've, just looked at their brands the other day. Um, if you go to Office Depot and you spend $100, you're going to get a piece of shit usually. Stay away from those big, puffy, leather, non-adjustable armrest chairs. You want to find something with mesh, something that has structure, something that has adjustable lumbar support, and, and kind of go from there. Um, I'll, I'll need to do some, do some looking around. My chair, which you can't see right now, is a human-scale freedom headrest. Don't Google it. It's $1,400. But... It is the best fucking chair that I've ever had in my life, um, other than the poop stains, which I have no idea how they got there, but they're, they are there. Um, yeah, stay away 
from all gaming chairs. Um, even though Jimmy has had a great experience, I have seen a lot of shit on the interweb about respawn chairs, um, about them kind of being uh, DX Racer 2.0. With with some of their lines, I know that the other ones that they make are like those. This yeah. one is made like an office chair. It's mesh, and like it was the only one of their chairs that I would purchase because it's like an office style chair. I got you. Okay. This one, it actually like if you see, it's not really. It's got a wide back like an office chair. It's not like a, you know, I you know what I mean. Yep. Yeah. Um. And yours looks like you have a headrest. Again, you guys can't see mine really. Fuck! Can't see it. At it all. does, but I'm just not sitting all the way up. It's. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna have to look into that, Rosal. I might just hit you up after I do a little bit of research to see what's out there. But yeah, stay away from stay away from any chair that you've seen on Twitter. Is, is the the advice that I can give you? <laughs> uh, next question from Yash. Do you like water? Last week I met a man who hates drinking water and its taste, but I can't fathom that. Uh, so we kind of talked about this a little bit. Yeah, I fucking hate water. If it's ice cold Fiji. I'm on board, um, but water from the tap, dog shit. Every water bottle company, dog shit. I hate drinking it. I hate how I have to drink it. So does Jimmy. Yeah, I'm not a... I'll, I'll drink water, but it's not my favorite drink. I like I like that it's got bubbles in it. I do, yeah. I'm a big fan of bubbles. Uh, Jimmy, also from Yash. Jimmy, did someone suspect you being a streamer because of your kit while you were remote teaching, or did you use a different setup and stay under the radar? There were people that already knew that I was streaming at that point, so it wasn't like it was a huge secret. So, yeah, I mean, I don't even hide it from now. Like, I'll tell the kids right now, like, in the beginning of school that I, I stream, but I have that conversation with them right out the gate that it's 18-plus stream. It wouldn't be appropriate to talk about it as their teacher. I said if they caught me outside of school somewhere, I, I could talk to them about it a little more, but and most kids are pretty good about that. So it's worked out. Good. Next question from Surreal. Out of curiosity, how do you feel about this? How do you feel discoverability should work? What would be a method that would be desirable? I don't have this solution for discoverability on Twitch. I just know that if you compare it to some other social media platforms, it's just really hard to find the content you desire. You know, um, I don't know what the solution to that is. I, I'm not. I'm not a uh, into brand management and, and how those analytics work. I'm not that kind of smart. I just know that it's, I know that it's not good, especially the, the smaller of an audience you have, the more difficult it, it is to really grow on this platform. That's all. Is there, I think that there's probably more things that they, sh they probably should be focusing a little more energy on it. What is the fix? I don't know, but there's, what it is, the way it stands right now is poor, and I think it should be better. There is no doubt that the way Twitch does discoverability is the worst way. Um, and I mean, it's so easy to compare to platforms like TikTok or YouTube. Um, so d just to, to kind of put this into perspective, before the stream... I went for a 40 minute walk and for the entirety of the walk, some of you are going to judge me really fucking hard for this because this is the time where I should be focusing on exercising. I responded to TikTok comments for 40 minutes straight on the past three TikToks that I uploaded from the past week. There was enough comments and enough engagement from three TikToks that maybe took me a total of 10 minutes to to record and post compare that to Twitch, right? Of somebody who is brand new to the platform. Maybe they've been streaming for a year, right? Like I've only been creating content on TikTok for uh six to eight months, gained 25,000 followers, and I can spend a 40 minute walk responding to comments just from the organic reach and the engagement that you get just from being on the platform. That shit does not exist on Twitch. Um, this is going to be a long-winded answer. Now, flip side, we've got YouTube Gaming Live that is now a thing, and we have these massive creators that have moved. One of the biggest criticisms from people on Twitch is that <coughs> the way that YouTube does discoverability and recommends live streams and their UI is dog shit. 
And YouTube has come out and said straight up, we're not changing anything. This is how we believe discoverability should happen. Going back to the conversation that Jimmy and I had earlier of we don't go looking for content. We more so wait for the content to come to us. And that's how YouTube works. How you, how you use a platform when you watch videos, what you like, what you watch a long time, it's using, it's complicated, way over our heads algorithm to curate what they think you want to watch. And I guarantee that if I asked any like repetitive YouTube watcher in here that yes, they found something in the recommended feed or there was something that auto played from YouTube that got them onto another creator, right? Like that shit works. It feels fucking weird to us because this isn't how we have been finding new people on Twitch, but that shit is working over on YouTube. And now that they have YouTube shorts that are built into the platform, it's what YouTube has going on is on another fucking level and everybody should be excited and terrified because I'm from the research that I've done recently and kind of watching trends and listening to the professionals talk about it. I guarantee that YouTube is going to be an insane competitor within a couple of years. It's going to be, it's going to be crazy. Um, and Twitch is going to have to do some insane changing. So I personally believe how TikTok and how Twitch do discoverability are unprecedented, right? Like they, they are obviously doing something right because of the organic growth that you can TikTok see. TikTok and YouTube, you mean? What did I say? TikTok and Twitch. Yep, TikTok and YouTube. Um, it's a it's a huge huge thing. So my that that's really my answer because I almost guarantee that Twitch has probably booted up like a, a test version of their site where the people with the most viewers at the top weren't at the top. And I guarantee all of the top streamers saw a massive hit in viewership and they were like, oh no, this can't work because if we change discoverability to not keep the top people on top, these people are going to leave our platform. Right. Because um, there's really a select amount of people that have, that have contracts on Twitch. So um, do I have the answer? No, but I know that the way that Twitch is doing it is the fucking worst. And as somebody who started on TikTok six months ago and has seen an insane amount of growth, it's obvious that there's a better way to do things. Um, but with live content, it's difficult. And it makes you think, can a live only con or can a live only platform is it sustainable or do you need evergreen content and i think that youtube is proving that right now oh, you might, i think you might be right. uh, da, 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 da. next question also from surreal how much time do you spend on your cutaway scenes jimmy do you try to keep making those regularly or is it just when a concept hits you i would say each one of those cutaway scenes takes anywhere between two to four hours to flesh out. Mm, these days, it's when just an idea hits me, and I I have not been making new scenes a lot lately. Um, but in the past, I used to make like one a week, you know. And when I was, this was before I was a partner, and I was really kind of embracing the changes that I was making my channel, and I was seeing what was working and what wasn't. So then. I started making like that would be what I would do on Saturday afternoons. I would sit down on my computer and I would watch a few YouTube videos, try and like uh, I might have had an idea going into it. But even if I didn't, I would always sit down and then usually come up with something to, mm -hmm. that I could put in. So I guess to answer your question, I used to do it like regularly. Like I would sit down even if I didn't have an idea. These days, it's mainly just when I have the time or an, or like a really something funny hits me like I'm like, okay, this would be funny. Oh. And again, that's kind of one of the, that's kind of one of the byproducts of creating content a lot, like constantly getting your creative juices flowing is just being live gives you an opportunity to get more ideas for more scenes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, third to last question from Joe Tashi. What are the top three things you would like to see Twitch implement for streamers and top three, three things for chatters? I'm going to slim this down to one thing for streamers and one thing for chatters just so we don't kind of ramble on. Um, so what would you like to see Twitch implement for one thing for streamers, one thing for chatters? Uh, for streamers, I would say... I 
I mean, I guess more discoverability like we've been talking about. That'd be great, you know? You know that's the cop out answer, but we've been talking about it all night. It seems the easy one to say. For chatters, I don't know. I mean... I mean, I feel like the chat gets its job done. I, I don't, I don't know from like the viewer angle. I guess from like the if you're just purely as a viewer, I don't know what the most wanted thing is because I view Twitch, but I view it from the perspective as also being a streamer too. So maybe, I, maybe I don't know how to answer that question exactly. Not saying I don't, but, but I can't think of anything that I feel like I need to have as a as a viewer or a chatter. Uh, as a streamer, I would like to see a max of 20,000 kilobit per second bitrate <laughs> and 1440p and 4K streaming. That would be fucking amazing. Uh, I don't know if that's ever going to happen. And for a chatters, I would like tier three subs to be able to customize the color of each individual letter of their name in chat. So like when they when they type in chat, they can choose the individual color of every single character oh, in their name. Cool. That'd be yeah. fucking awesome. I mean, um, if you're going to pay that much money, shit. Right. Uh, just like be able to see some really cool gradients or some really cool designs of, of colors. I think that'd be cool. Um, yeah, they really need to do something else about fucking tier two and tier three subs. Yeah. I can't believe it's been this long and there Have hasn't been extra emotes. any. Oh yeah. my God. And like, I, again, talking about stats and marketing and things that are probably way over our head, I wonder how much it costs Twitch to give all partners one more emote for tier two subs. Like the bandwidth costs, the computing costs, you know, the whatever. Because they got to host it and they got to pay for the bandwidth. They got to pay for the, the usage. How much does it cost to give... 500,000 affiliates, one more emote. And I, I assume that that probably has something to do with it. But that's just kind of like a stat that I would love to see. Hmm. I think those, yeah, those are my answers. Uh, definitely needs to be some more things for tier two and tier three subs, for sure. Uh, okay, so there's a uh, second to last question. Would you rather battle a horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses? And Ro Rosalind, I'm gonna get to your question last. Even though I cut questions off, I love you too much to cut you off. So, I go horse-sized duck. Here's my question: Do the hundred so do the hundred duck-sized horses have regular horse-sized cocks? So, if so, I'm fighting the hundreds. <laughs> Can you imagine a duck with a horse-sized cock? Oh my god, that'd be hilarious. All right, last question. Uh, while this may be a biased question because I'm an investor, if an alternative streaming site like Altair started succeeding and did everything that Twitch, YouTube, Facebook doesn't, would you start over on a new platform? Mm, I mean, I would probably only migrate to another platform if out of necessity. Um, if if there was a if there if if I feel like I'd only do that if there was a reason for me to do that and an, or a necessity. If I was being lured, little of me lured to go over there and, and I had some guarantee that it was going to be better for me as a streamer, then perhaps I would. But I, I've seen these sort of things. These st We've had a couple challengers to Twitch over the years, and they usually end up going out with a whimper, you know? And I don't, I'm not saying that this thing can't be successful. You got to think about where's the money going to come from too. Like you got, you're going up against YouTube and Facebook and Amazon. Fuck, you know, I mean, that's big money right there. So I don't know. So this is a, this is a rhetorical question, but how many of you in chat have a second full-time job? in case your first full-time job fails, right? It doesn't fucking exist. No. There's this weird thing in content creation where in a dreamland, you should not depend on one, on one platform, right? Like the dream is to have your income diversified 
so that if one of those platforms goes under, you have enough of a following on the other platforms to redirect your community wherever you're going to next. Um, so I am doing my best as much as I love Twitch. Twitch has been so impactful on my life. There's so much in my current day that I'm thankful for because of Twitch. If Twitch were to make some insane changes, I want to be able to say, see you later, Twitch. I'm, I'm going somewhere else, right? Uh, you don't. I don't want to be so loyal that I cannot go somewhere else. And in my opinion, that's how you should aim to be. Your, your TikTok, your Instagram, your YouTube, they should all be substantial to a point so that you can survive a platform going under because platforms are going to go under. And the hardest thing about a new platform coming out of the woodwork is there is no reputation. They are late to the market. Um, they, they don't have any part of the market share. And it's like, okay, well, why, why would I give up everything I have on this platform in order to try something new, right? There has to be an extreme driving force in order to do that. So if something came along, would I jump? Absolutely not. I would wait a year or two for a platform to mature and actually show that it's sticking around. Uh, I mean, look, uh, a platform that was backed by one of the largest companies in the fucking universe, Microsoft, stopped without any notice. They just dropped and left, and that was it. And then even other platforms that everybody thought were immense, like Caffeine and DLive, do you know anybody that streams on either of those platforms? And, and here's the thing, and I see this from Zonger and Chat too. It's not a matter of loyalty. I get that. But it's also a matter of feasibility. It's like, there. it's not, I, I would go, if it was a necessity, yes. But why would you go to an unproven platform right out the gate? Right. Especially even as an affiliate, you have a, basically a kind of a non-compete clause in your contract where you can't be streaming on a different platform at the same time. So if you wanted to create content on the platform, no problem, but you can't do it at the same time you're live streaming. So I don't know. I, I think it, Altair and, uh, has a lot of ground to make up if they're ever going to be considered. I'm not saying they can't. I'm just saying they have a lot of ground they got to make up. Or yeah. I could consider them as a viable platform. Right. You, you have to prove yourself because for, you know... Let's say Jimmy's income, 80% of it comes from non-Twitch. If a new platform comes up and they say, hey, Jimmy, we'll give you a hundred grand to come over to our platform and stream. Jimmy could go, well, 80% of my income is already, you know, so what, what does it matter, right? right? But there's also, because of the culture of Twitch, it's not just about money and exposure and discoverability and the ability to grow, right? There is some sort of a personal relationship that you have to your community and a, a, almost like a responsibility to be on Twitch. Now, I'm not saying that that should be the end all be all, but that is a factor when people are thinking about platforms um, because not only are streamers loyal to platforms, viewers are loyal to platforms and sometimes viewers just don't want to fucking bounce. Um, and you know, there, there's, it's such a large conversation. There's so many factors when it comes to switching platforms. Um, but as a whole, yeah, you should be to like the the goal or the dream is to be be able to move around to whatever platform it is, doing your same thing, you know. But the reality of actually doing that is a lot. It's a oh lot more God. complicated. Yeah, it is. It is. And and again, going back to my point of how many of us have a second full time job, like this is a being a content creator is such. Oh my god, it's like it's one of the craziest fucking things. Like who who actually wants this to be their life? Having to be having to be visible on nine platforms, never knowing where your revenue is gonna come from. It'd be like you can get canceled and your shit can be over. Um it, there's just there's so many unknowns and um yeah, it's it's I could that could be a really, really long winded answer if we wanted it to. It's a good question, but again, it's Great. one of those things that's like it's there's so many variables in answering that, you know, I mean, yep. it, it would require knowing what the specific situation was like in X, Y, Z before you could really, and yeah. like I said, too, this platform is, it's still in a not even existing format right now. We don't know what it's going to be like, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see if it becomes viable. Yes, we shall. 
All right, Jimbo, that will conclude our 163rd episode of Crocs and Hot Pockets. It was awesome Ooh. to sit down and chat with you. I, I feel like I feel like I haven't talked to you since you've been in my house. Just because of how I haven't very much, yeah. Because yeah, of, just yeah, crazy shit. But um, always always a good time to be able to sit down with you and, and have a chat. So thanks for being here. Oh yeah, man, always a pleasure. Want to shout out your shit and sell out before we close it down? Oh uh, yeah, if you uh, want to come check me out on Twitch, you can find me at Middle Aged Stream um, and uh, Middle Aged Stream on Twitter. I have a TikTok also that I post to maybe once every other week. I uh, usually do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, but I think this week I'm gonna probably I'm probably gonna scale back. I, I think I'm gonna take a break till Thursday. I haven't actually made that official yet, but I'm going to make it official right now. That way I can tell my wife and she'll hold me to it. Uh, it'll be good to take a couple days off. Maybe I can do some off-stream content stuff so I can come back with some fresh ideas. Yeah. So at the beginning of the stream, I started a prediction. So I've been having people gamble their points um, in my channel recently because it's fucking awesome. And the prediction was who would get up first to go to the bathroom or get a drink, Knackers or Jimmy? And neither of us got up the entire time. Now, mm -hmm. Weenie did bring me a beer in the middle of the show. However, you had two drinks to start with. So so we're even there. So now we got to find a way to do this by chance so that we can end the prediction. So do we want to flip a coin or I don't know how we can settle this. I can just settle this right now and tell you I got to pee really bad. I, I knew that there was gambling going on. And I've actually, if you watch the VOD back, anytime you see this, this is me grabbing my crotch and going, please don't oh pee my in your God. pants. D you were really trying that hard? Oh, yeah. I've actually been trying really hard to not piss myself for like Fuck. the last hour. All right. Do you want to do a coin here. toss? No, you win. I've, I'm about to explode. <laughs> I, oh my God. I think I might. I think All I right. might have broken like a kidney. Uh, so, doing you, this. so you're forfeiting. You are forfeiting. I'm forfeiting right now. Okay. And I'm gonna um, I'm gonna end this podcast the best way I know, and they say, "Bye." Gotta pee my pants. Oh my God! Yeah, if you want to go. All right. Um, okay. So out of out of the people who voted, seventy nine percent voted that Jimmy would get up to go to the bathroom first. And 20% knackers. So we are going to choose that outcome. Who will get up and pee first? It was indeed Jimmy. And your points have been dished out to everybody in chat. <laughs> All right, kids. Thank you for being here. Um, it is It has been an awesome podcast back. I'm, I'm really, I apologize. Even though I know that I needed it. Dude, there's no way he pissed that fast. Um, even though I knew that I needed it, um, it was still difficult to be away from podcasting for so long. You know, there were so many nights where I wanted to do it, but I just didn't have the energy or the motivation to do so. Um, I have been focusing really, really hard on both TikTok and YouTube. Uh, I have 20 plus YouTube scripts that are written, and I'm really focusing hard on recording them and, and getting them published. And that is just what I've been really focusing on. There is a slight chance you might even see a, a, a day of my weekly schedule get removed to where I'm just streaming on Tuesdays and Sundays. I'm really fucking focusing on Twitter or on TikTok and YouTube. So if you guys enjoy tech content, if you enjoy DIY projects and shit like that, um, YouTube channels where I'm going to be putting a lot of work into. And um, yeah, just really, really trying to fulfill this official switch to technology based content um for for my primary you know not as much gaming even though we do game every once in a while here and there um but how was your pee jimmy you're muted excellent excellent <laughs> so anyways um with that said i'm going to be taking off the next week of it's my you know my my monthly take off the third or fourth week of streaming and I'm going to be focusing on YouTube. Not only that, you're having but your a, monthly period off. You can't say that. Your monthly period off? You, you cannot say that. A period means a period of time. Your monthly period off. Look it up. That's not what he meant, chat. That is not you're what having he meant. your monthly period off. Mm, just happens to be that? monthly, right? 
Mm. I mean, you said you have you have a period off every month. Mm. Okay. But anyways, but however, um, there is a guy that I met on TikTok that is going to be staying in my house tomorrow night. And we're going to be doing a podcast on his channel tomorrow night. And we'll be talking about, you know, Twitch culture, his his road trip. He is driving from where he lives to Pittsburgh. And then he's going to Vegas on a motorcycle. He's driving around the entire country on a fucking motorcycle like a psychopath. So he'll be in the house tomorrow night. We'll be podcasting from the couch, um, but we'll be on his channel. His channel's Anime Daddy, and uh, I'll throw it on on the on the Discord and Twitch and shit. So any closing thoughts, Jimmy? Go Niners! Oh my God! Bow back! <laughs> All right, everybody, have a fantastic night. Thank you so much. I'm waving at the wrong camera. Oh my fucking god! Everybody, have a good night. Thanks for chilling with us. I'll see you next. You know what? Um, in two weeks is Charmed. Charmed Barian's gonna be on the podcast in two weeks. The Skyrim man. Yeah, the yeah, guy that you don't show. know. Be a good show. Um. Okay, everybody, have a good night. Thank you so much. We love you. Goodbye.